All right. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the latest update the FDA has released for Philips Respironics recall devices. Update straight from the FDA. Certain Philips Respironic ventilators, BiPAP machines, and CPAP machines recalled due to potential health risks. FDA safety communication. And this article goes on to talk about the Trilogy 100 and Trilogy 200 ventilators. These Philips Trilogy 100 and Trilogy 2000 ventilators were recalled in June 2021 for issues with polyester-based polyurethane foams, potentially blocking the airway. Again, Philips, please stop putting foam in the airway of these machines. This needs to stop. This needs to stop being a common practice all across the board. I don't care who the manufacturer is. So the problem we have here is the new foam, the new silicone-based foam they used to replace the old crappy foam that broke down and left black particles in people's lungs and potentially causing cancer is now blocking the airway of these ventilator patients' units and preventing them from breathing. What a brilliant idea. This update goes on to talk about 20 more units. There's 20 units in this recall. I mean, that, that's a lot of units in the first place. I must have misspoke a little bit earlier about Trilogy 2000. I don't see that anywhere on this list, so I'm just guessing the FDA made a typo, and they were just meaning to say Trilogy 200 ventilator. This FDA update is just getting worse and worse as I go on. Okay, repaired and replaced BiPAP or CPAP machines. Recommendations for people who use BiPAP or CPAP machines replaced by Philips and their caregivers. Be aware that during the manufacturing facility inspection, the FDA obtained additional information not previously available to the FDA regarding the silicone-based foam used in a similar device marketed outside the U.S., which failed one safety test for the release of certain chemicals of concern called volatile organic compound, or VOCs. And it goes on to say, similar testing provided by Philips to the FDA on devices authorized for marketing in the U.S. had demonstrated acceptable results. The FDA has requested that Phillips retain an independent laboratory to perform additional testing to determine what, if any, potential safety risks may be posed to the patients by the silicone-based foam. At this time, the FDA does not have sufficient information to conclude whether the silicone-based foam being used in the repaired devices poses any risk to the patients in the U.S., so it sounds like a outside laboratory outside of the United States did a test on this, this new foam that they're using and decided that it, it wasn't recommended for, for use for their patients. And now we have to figure out why Philips is allowed to have their own laboratory do the testing when we already know we can't trust them. So it goes on to say, so the FDA recommends that you continue to use your repair to replace device. If you have any additional concerns, talk to your healthcare provider about the plan for your care and treatment. The results from the independent testing are needed to determine if the silicone-based foam used and the repaired devices does in fact present any risk to the patients. If it wasn't bad enough already, the rabbit hole goes much deeper. Since April 2021, the FDA has received more than 90,000 MDRs, including 260 reports of death reportedly associated with their EEPUR foam breakdown or su suspected foam breakdown. I'm just going to leave this up here for a little bit, all the way on the far right column, that 126, 43, and 91. That's all reported deaths that were reported on MDRs. The number of deaths has been updated to reflect Philip's retrospective review of the MDRs. So at this point, I have a question for all of you. Do you feel safe using your refurbished product? or potentially Dream Station 2, if that's what you got. It has this new silicone-based foam. Now, an outside source from outside the United States has done a test on this, folks, and they have decided that it's not safe for their customers to use. So is that something that's concerning you right now at this point? And if so, please leave me a comment down below because I would really appreciate your feedback on this topic because I am super annoyed with Philips right now. And I cannot stand the fact that we cannot get an option for at least getting a refund, even if it requires signing a release form. I do not want their piece of crap product in my house. I have no use for this product. It's basically just going to sit there as a spare. If I need to use it, I'm going to use a, a blank turbine container that I got off of Amazon, and that'll be it. There's going to be no more foam in the airway of my respiratory devices. There's absolutely no reason to have foam in the airway, and I cannot say this enough, if you haven't heard me say it enough already, I am adamant about this. Stop 
designing this stuff with foam in the airway. The only thing that should be getting into the airway is air and at best a little bit of the filtration, the cotton filter that sits outside the machine. You might find traces of that. That's not going to kill you as a, as a general rule. We're not going to get off gassing from a little cotton filter. So do your due diligence and actually engineer something that works for the people instead of the company. Another important topic is reporting problems to the FDA. If you have a health issue, including any of the health issues listed above or any problem with your device, the FDA encourages you to talk to your healthcare provider and report the problem through the MedWatch voluntary reporting form. Healthcare personnel employed by facilities that are subject to the FDA user's facility reporting requirements should follow the reporting procedures established by their facilities. Now, this is something that I am familiar with, and it needs to be done in a certain way. So the patient needs to report to the healthcare provider, whether it's in-home healthcare living, they need to report to their staff, or they need to report to their DME provider that they're having a problem with their system. If they're having a problem with their system, then either the healthcare provider or the DME will do an MDR and they will send that off to wherever it needs to go. All right. That just about wraps it up for the uh, FDA update. I am going to provide links down below to the FDA update that I'm referring to. That way you can get it for easy reference. I am also going to put a link down there for a, uh, a news article, which got me on the topic in the first place. And the reason I went to the FDA website was to verify this person's a story. It's from MedTech Dive. Never heard of them, but they did a really well-written story and it covers 90% of the topics that we've already gone over in case anybody would like to read that. So that's definitely going to be down in the likes below and in the description section. And I appreciate you guys for listening to my rants. If you made it this far, as always, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment down below.